Hey, good morning. I'm Staff Sergeant Jeff Glinski of uh, Calgary Police Service, uh, the Centralized General Investigation Section from District 4. Uh, first name is G-E-O-F-F, -F, last name G-A-W-L-I-N-S-K-I. I have a short prepared statement and I'll accept questions after. The Calgary Police Service has seized drugs and guns from two southeast homes following a month-long investigation into a dial dope operation. In June, members of the District 4 operations team began investigating a drug trafficking group in the city southeast. During the investigation, officers determined two southeast homes were being used as stash locations for the operation. On Thursday, July 11th, police executed search warrants on the two homes, one in the 6200 block of 17th Avenue Southeast and the other in the 900 block of Pensdale Crescent Southeast. A warrant was also executed on a vehicle associated with the group. In total, investigators seized more than 98,000 in methamphetamines, 52,000 in marijuana, $30,000 in heroin, over $11,000 in cocaine, and various amounts of oxycontin and codeine. Several weapons were also recovered, including four long-barreled rifles, a revolver, swords, machetes, a conducted energy weapon, a flare gun, and bear spray. Four people have been charged in relation to this investigation. David Lee Little, 37, Jeremy Douglas Mockler, 34, Brandy Lee Ellis, 34, and Yanni Christian Suterainen, 37. Uh, all, a combined 50 charges were laid you know, in this investigation. These people were not well known to our to us before this investigation started. How long do you think this operation has been going on? Uh, we're not exactly sure on that, but our investigation was just over a month before it was uh, the warrant was executed. How did you start the investigation? Was it calls from the public? It was information from the public, tip from the public. Where were the, uh, how did their operation work? Where they were, where they were distributing it? They they seem to be a distributor to to help uh, supply uh, street level. Drug trade, as you can see, the diversification, uh, the different uh, types of narcotics uh, in this incident. They, it was basically you can define these as stash pads. So, how many people would be accessing the stash pads? Are there more people that you're looking for? Uh, the investigation is still ongoing uh, as to other avenues regarding that, um, but these four were definitely the main players in distributing what we have here today. Um, that that part is still being investigated. But you obviously do believe they were associated to it? Well, to get this high quantity, you, you have to be getting supplied by somebody that's connected. And uh, like again, we're still determining uh, the origin of that. What kind of dent have you guys made in uh, the distribution of these kinds of drugs in Calgary? Well, this is a significant uh, seizure. Uh, but really, to make a, a major dent, is it going to stop the drug trade? I think you'd be naive to say that. Uh, but at this time, I think the people that live in these areas and were um, in, in proximity to the activity of what was going on there, I think it's uh, significant to them. Is it, uh, give me a sense of how common or uncommon it is for you to seize drugs like heroin in Calgary. Uh, well, we, we see heroin in, 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 in Calgary on a regular basis. Uh, just anecdotally, talking, talking to my street officers, they, they see heroin and people uh, engaged in heroin style of activity on, on on a pretty consistent basis. Same kind of question, but you know, you've got swords, you've got a taser that looks like brass knuckles. So it's some pretty, these guys obviously took what they were doing pretty serious. Well, th there was a pretty high, higher level of sophistication for, for this activity in, in these areas. Uh, the, the residents of the 6200 block, 17th Ave, they, did, were, they were doing counter surveillance. They had surveillance uh, cameras set up on the residents. They had uh, um, electronics, things to like a debugger. Um, so they're going to the, this level of sophistication to obviously prevent any activity that they don't want around their residence. Is that a house? It, it's a trailer. So it's in that trailer park uh, across from the, the fireworks? That's correct. What's a debugger? Where uh, just, just in case there's some sort of, uh, from my understanding, there's some sort of uh, monitoring equipment that can detect it if, if there's any listening devices in your premise. Um, during the investigation, we did see uh, s some dealing activity, uh, but the investigation took us just to making their seizure. And they weren't arrested um, during the actual what we believe to be trafficking, but they're all being charged with trafficking-related offenses. And so, can you describe to us just a little bit the um, so people have keys to this stash pad, and what would it look like? In uh, there was. 
Uh, Mr. Suterainen was living in the location on 6200 block of 17th Ave Southeast, and all, all of these people were seen going into both residences on a consistent basis. And one of them was simply just building drugs? Um, there, was, there was drug seized in both locations. Um, the, the trailer is a residence in 6200 block 17th Ave and the residence on Pennsdale Crescent is also a residence. And where, where were the drugs, like were they made in Plainview? Um, the, the drugs in the, in the trailer uh, were concealed throughout the house in all sorts of, we had to look in cereal boxes and in all sorts of very concealed spots uh, in items that are everyday items that you wouldn't think you'd be finding drugs in them. So. A very thorough search was done to locate all of what was found. Deputy Mayor, may I ask you this, were there any kids in any of the residences? Not to my knowledge, no, there wasn't. Give me a sense of the danger that people at this level, because as you said, these aren't street level drug dealers, these are maybe one level removed. Give me a sense of the danger that these people pose to the public in the area around which they live. Well, obviously, they felt they were in danger um, because they have weapons here um, that, that are being used from our, from our experience to defend themselves because they are, they are targets now for other people to come and take what they, what they own. So as you can see, we have uh, four rifles. Um, these three rifles here are primarily used for hunting. The rifle directly in front of me here is actually an assault rifle, and it can be basically considered the, the little brother to the AK-47. It's a semi-automatic rifle. Um, somebody with knowledge of firearms could convert it to a fully automatic rifle. Well, there's, there is always a threat to the public um, when, when this type of activity is going on in a residential neighborhood because there, there could be a collateral uh, effect. We, we've seen homes where there's been shootings and, and the, the rounds go into houses that aren't even involved in this. So people, people could somehow be in the un, unwillingly in the path. Are these licensed weapons? Um, I th we're, we're still determining that through our investigation, uh, but, they, but they're all, they're all, they can all be obtained legally. If you have the proper documentation in Canada. Those, those clips, are they for the rifles? Yes. So those aren't legal clips then with all that, that many rounds, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I, I haven't actually handled those magazines personally. And there's shotgun shells, was there a shotgun? There wasn't a shotgun located in this. Uh, there was a revolver that that's not here. It's uh, that that's being uh, processed uh, through our investigation still. This, this was being d delivered to people who were going to be doing the dealing in simple language. Okay. They, they, were, they, were supply, they were supplying the street level dealers. Is there anything you can tell us about the accused? Are they uh, long time Calgarians? Are they relatively new to the city? I, I don't know that. And you don't know who they were associated to? Or is that still looking that, 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 those, those avenues are still being investigated as to where, um, if they have any connections that are um, connected in any groups that may be more well known to us. But you alluded to it earlier that this sort of operation, this magnitude of an operation requires some sort of organization. So it clearly is organized crime. Well, well, well it is organized in the fact that they, they obviously did have some sort of systematic uh, organization to how they were um, proceeding. They, they felt uh, it was prudent to take steps to, to do the counter surveillance. We don't see that in a lot of these type of investigations when we do raid drug homes. Uh, they, they did have a variety of weapons. Um, th there, you know, there's even a weapon there that's a, a, a taser knuckle duster. So to even make efforts to obtain a variety of these weapons shows a, a higher level need to be more, more organized. Are you the accused related? Not to my knowledge. Um, they, they've, they've been charged and they're released. Just one other question on um, possibly how long this was operating. Do you know how, the, like, did residents or were you guys able to determine how long the accused was Well, when, when these warrants were executed, we did get a lot of feedback from the public and they felt uh, that the, the, the neighbors in the close proximity um, were really uh, thankful for the police because they did feel there was something going on there, obviously. So, uh, um, 
again, we received a lot of positive feedback from the public. Did they say roughly how long it was going on? I mean, had this person been living there for a couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of years? I, I can't speak to that.